Hi, this is Brandon from Tay Talk Tech, back here again with another video. Today we're going to continue the QEMU KVM series, specifically covering Snapshots Part 2, External Snapshots. So let's go ahead and jump into it to go ahead and kind of just give you a, a summary of what we've... Uh, of what we kind of covered in the last video in regards to external snapshots is is what's going to happen is the original disk will become read only and the new overlay disk is created for the updated writes. This uh, can be performed on either raw or QCOW2 disk images, not supported by the graphical user interface or the GUI. The original image will show as a backing image for the created snapshot. You will need to keep the backing image for the snapshot to function. So make sure that you don't delete that if you're going to be utilizing external snapshots. Now, as far as the information commands go, they're pretty much going to be the same. Now, you'll still have the, the Versh snapshot list command. We're just going to go through these commands again. Versh snapshot list and then we're going to do peppermint test all right there we go now one of the interesting things about this command is that it does not tell you whether they're internal or external now there we you can see the difference which i'll show you here i'll, I'll show you how to tell if this is a ex, ex, external uh, snapshot but one of the easy ways to list it is you can still run the same command just verse snapshot list peppermint test and then we're going to do external all right and we can if you add that external on there that tac tac external you can see that there is nothing listed there so that's going to tell us that the one snapshot that we do have there is internal now we can also just do the same command and then do internal and there we go we can actually see that that peppermint test one is in an internal snapshot now let's go ahead and see the specific information about that snapshot and that's going to be with the verse a snapshot info and then we're going to do peppermint test and then we're going to do the peppermint test and then one and there we go if we actually use this command right here we can see the location is internal now if that was an external snapshot then that would say external and I can show you that once we've actually gone through and created some of these external um, external snapshots so the of course the verse uh, Dom block list command will still work verse Dom block list and then we're going to do peppermint test oops I think I spelled it. yep there we go all right we can still see this gives us our our target uh, our target right here of VDA just like we did in the last video and then you can still also just you know use the QEMU um, image info command to get information about a disk image QEMU IMG info and there we go that command still works now um, one of the one of the commands that you'll remember from the previous video that was very helpful was the verse snapshot current command now the unfortunate thing with external snapshots is they're always going to be a little tricky compared to internal ones internal ones are very simple very easy to do but these ones are just a little bit of a pain to utilize but once you kind of get the hang of them, they're not too bad but it's going to be the verse snapshot current command because it's not going to show you it's not going to be it's not going to have a way to be able to show that information to you now one of the last commands here that you can do as far as getting information is is you can get the you can actually get the uh, the disk image location of a snapshot. So what we'll want to do here is we'll want to go, and we're going to just use the internal one because it, it's perfectly fine, is verse snapshot tack dump XML. And then we're going to, we're going to go ahead and hit tack tack domain 
peppermint test. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to do snapshot name. All right, and we're going to do peppermint. I think it was one, I think is what it was. Yep, peppermint test one. And then we're going to do a grep. I'm going to do source file. And then we're going to do, oops. We're going to do a head tack one. And then there we go. We can actually see where the backing file is, where the source file is. In this particular case, it's going to be the same one because it's an internal one, but once we get to the external ones, I can show you that command again. Uh, one of the things I, I realize I haven't really explained is really kind of what this is, what this command is doing is, of course, we can see that first uh, snapshot dump XML. And what this is doing is it's dumping the XML file for the peppermint test domain and the snapshot name of peppermint test one. And then we're using the grep command. Grep is like, hey, give me this. From, from whatever I just put in there. Um, and, and keep in mind, we're, we're feeding this first command into this second command into this third command. That's essentially what's happening here is we're chaining these commands together. And when we, when we put that first one in there, it's like, hey, dump the XML file. And then I want you to grab the source file field. But then I want you to run this other command in addition to that. Is, and what head is, is it's going to head is a command that will give you the top portion of a file. By default, it gives you the first 10 lines of a file. But in this particular case, because we are using TAC1, that is only going to give us the top line of the output. So keep that in mind. Just a little ex explanation there so you kind of know what's going on here. I try to explain these commands I'm going through. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. So um, if there's ever any specific commands that you want me to go through in more detail, you can always list those below, and I'd be happy to go ahead and consider covering those in future videos, so make sure you subscribe for that. And always make sure you watch to the entire video because, you know, I'm going to give you all sorts of interesting information as we're going through this, so you don't want to miss any of that. So now let's go ahead and jump into creating an external snapshot. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is verse dom block list. And then we're going to do pepper mint test. All right, still VDA as it was a you know a second ago when we checked. So that is that is fantastic. So we know that's going to be our our target right there. Now, you know one of the things that I ha I realize I haven't really explained is is really what is that VDA target. So whenever you're whenever you have mounted disks on a Linux system is is they're going to be mounted in a specific place. Um, there's typically, you know, depending on the type of of mount is you have you have two options and we're going to take it. We're going to take a little bit of a detour here is is you have. Let's just do an LS of the root is you have the mount and media point. Now, depending on the, the Linux distribution is it's going to it's going to mount things in this. If you're setting when you're when you pop in a USB drive on a lot of especially Debian and Ubuntu based systems, you, they will put that in the media directory is it'll, it'll automatically create a separate mount point and mount it there. Now, by convention, one of the best practices is going to be to use the the MNT um, directory to go ahead and actually set up your mount points. Now you are under no obligation to do that. And if you want to see if you want to see the mounted partitions on your on your on your system is you can do df dash h and that will show you the actual uh, the different file systems and you know and where those file systems are actually mounted. And one of the things that you can see here is if you go over here to this dev NVMe 1NP1, P1, and you can see that it's mounted at var lib libvert images. And really, what that tells us is that I actually have a separate drive with a separate partition that's mounted specifically at that mount point. So, and I did that on purpose because I want any of the any of the images that I'm using, anything in the images directory, to be inside of that on used on that specific disk. And with VDA, like if you see here, we've got these different ones. You've got SDA and SDB. These right here are actual drives, like 
you know, like we're looking at like, you know, some type of SATA control drive. And the, this, these ones up here are actually different um, NVMe. So this right here is changing the naming convention just slightly. And you can see all of these right here is they have a dev. And dev is, stands for device. There's actually a dev directory, as you can see right here in the root directory, that's going to house all of your devices in that location. So when we talk about the VDA, really what it is, is it's okay. It's like, well, where is my, where is my primary, where is my primary, disk image mounted on that virtual machine and instead of using the SDA which is common for SATA drives on a Linux system when you're using when you're using bare metal it's going to do it's going to put these at dev uh, dev VDA is where that's going to be mounted at so that's that's where that comes into play so I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a detour there to kind of explain exactly what's happening with this VDA and essentially that's what we're doing is we're talking about okay well where is the where's the where's the where's this disk image mounted on the virtual machine and that's exactly where it's going to be and we can see and we know that because this right here is actually the location on our on our host machine where the disk image is and we can and this is telling us like it's like hey dude this is mounted at dev uh, dev slash bda and if that's something that again you want me to cover in more detail please feel free to uh, let me know down below so Great. Now, now that we've taken that detour, let's go ahead and get into creating two snapshots. We're actually going to create two separate snapshots so I can show you two separate methods for creating snapshots. So let me just make sure that I've got an additional like file here. I can't remember if I... Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a mictor, and then we're going to call one... We're going to create a new directory called external. All right. The first command that we're going to do is it's we're going to do the... We're going to create a snapshot but what that snapshot is going to do is it's actually going to save it in the same directory as the as the disk image for the virtual machine so that's where it saves these by default the second time that we go through this i'm actually going to show you how to do this in a separate directory so if you have a specific place that you want to save these 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 snapshots you can you can do that and this will show you how to do it so let's go ahead and jump into this let's go ahead and i'm just going to do a control L here to get that down and let's do a verse snapshot create and then we're going to do an as and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do domain and we're going to do peppermint test and then we will go ahead and give it a name and we're going to do peppermint test tack 2 and then we're going to go ahead and you can give it a description if you want. This is totally optional. Just make sure that if you have any spaces in your description that you put it in quotations. All right, then we'll go ahead and give it a disk only. And then we'll do atomic just like we did on the internal ones. And I think I spelled discur, discur, description wrong. Description. There we go. Perfect. There we go. Now let's go ahead and do a verse snapshot list. We're going to do peppermint test, and then we're going to do external. Boom, and there we go. We've got that one there already. So let's go ahead and go back to the back to the previous commands that we were covering so we can go ahead and see you know exactly how that's going to look once we actually once we actually have an, a, an external snapshot so let's go ahead and do a verse snapshot info peppermint test and then we're going to do peppermint test tack two there we go and we can see here that it is indeed an external snapshot now let's go ahead and let's go ahead and give you let's go ahead and go through the verse snapshot dump xml one now that we've actually got a external snapshots so we're going to do verse snapshot dump xml all right, and then we're going to go ahead and do 
tac tac domain uh tac tac domain we're going to do peppermint test then we're going to do tac tac snapshot name then we're going to do peppermint test 2 And we're going to do a grep source file. And we're going to do head tack one. And there we go. And if you see here, we can see it's in the same directory. And see what's what's the interesting thing here is that it actually gives us the uh, the full the full name here. It gives it does peppermint. Uh, tack test dot peppermint tack test two. So let's go ahead and you can just sim you can easily see it here with the ls command and we've got it right there. So that's how that's how you create it with one going into the with the external snapshot going into the default location. Now let's go ahead and do that outside of the default location. So let's do a verse snapshot create as and then we're going to tack tack domain peppermint test then we're going to do tac tac name peppermint test tac three all right we're not going to give it a description this time around because we've already gone through that so the next command that we want to go ahead and do is again just disk only and the reason that we're doing the disk only is because we only want to capture the image of the actual disk to go ahead and apply that. You know, we don't we don't care about all the rest of it. We just want the disk image. That's why we're only that's why we're doing the tac tac um, desk uh, disk image. So all right, now we're gonna do another option here. It's gonna be tac tac disk spec. So we can go ahead and set that location. Now the first thing that you're gonna do is is you're gonna set the you're gonna set the actual the actual virtual dislocation on the VM, which is going to be, in this case, it's going to be VDA. All right, and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do snapshot equals external. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the file, and we're going to equal var. We're going to do var lib libvert images external and then we'll go ahead and just give this a we'll just give this a name of pepper mint test and then three all right and that last thing we want to do is just do tac tac atomic and there we go we've actually gone ahead and created the created the snapshot and if we just do a cd i'm sorry if we just do an ls of external we can see it right there so cool um we went ahead and and you can use this if you want to go ahead and just set it in the same directory but give it a different name you can do it that way as well just to make sure that you if you have a specific naming convention that you're going for as you're you know doing your workflow All right. So the next thing that we want to go ahead and do is just check the check the actual backing file of the actual image. So let's go ahead and do a QEMU IMG, and then we're going to do info. We're going to do tac tac backing, and then chain tac chain, and then we're going to do the location of the the actual image so let's go ahead and go back over here to our command i'm going to do this one right here all right and there we go and we're going to do a pipe i'm going to do grep backing see and there we go it gives us the chain of the backing images as we can see that we've got uh, peppermint test and then We've got this one right here, peppermint two, as well. These are the. This is the. This is the. This one. This is the original backing image. This is the, the previous one to the current one. 
uh, to our current, to our actual current, um, to our actual, I'm sorry, to our current state status of the of the VM is it's currently going based on uh, Peppermint test tack three. Now the way that we can actually go ahead and and confirm this is we can we can do kind of what we've done with the snapshot dump uh, XML files. We can do the versh uh, dump XML, and then we're going to do peppermint test, and then we're going to grep tac tac. I'm sorry, not tac tac. Um, quotation marks source file, and then we're going to do whoops. Let's let's, like, let's do another pipe, and then head tac one. And we can see here, this is how you're going to be able to tell what is your current snapshot. We can't remember, again, we can't use the snapshot tac current. We have to use this method to be able to actually go ahead and confirm that the that the um, snapshot being used currently is the one that we're using. So now let's go ahead and start talking about reverting to an external snapshot. Now, libvert does not support um, doing reverting back to a external snapshot. So we kind of have to get do basically what a uh, basically a workaround to make this happen. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to make sure that the machine is powered off. So let's just go ahead and we'll just do a verse list. Nothing there. So it's actually already powered off. So we can go ahead and make our reversion here. Now we already, um, let me see here. Do we already have the, Cool. And the command you just saw me run there, real path, is what this what this command is. It's it gives you the path, the full uh, the full path of a of the of a file that you're looking for. So if you're looking for if you want to know the um, the full path, I forget. I'm sorry. I'd like the um, the name of the this particular path is escaping me for whatever reason right now, but. The absolute path. If you want to get the if you want to get the absolute path to your files, you'll use the real path command, and it'll tell you, "Hey, look, this is the absolute path to this file location. This is exactly where it's located." And we're going to need that to go ahead and run our command. So let's go ahead and go in here, and what we're going to do is you can also do again the verse snapshot dump XML command that we've used previously to go ahead and get this information. But I just didn't feel like doing that for this particular case since I'm already in the directory. I can just do it this way. Now, one of the things that you can do is per perform a consistency check just to make sure that everything is copacetic with your with your image and perfect there's no errors in our um, in our image so if you have any if you do end up with any errors just um, just go into just just do man verse and then just do a search for uh, the check which is going to be the operation that's taking place and it'll tell you it'll tell you a couple different op, uh, options for running a check on the disk image just in case you do get any errors. I'd have forgotten any errors but that doesn't mean that you won't run into them so uh, just check the man page and that's always a good um, it's always a good thing to do when you're working in Linux is if you're not sure, visit the man page. It's always the first thing, next thing, um, or even before the man page. If you want to just Google it, go ahead and Google it. Great places to, to find information. So now essentially what we're going to do is we're when we're doing the way to get around this is, is we're going to basically unmount the current disk image and put a new disk image in its place. So we're reverting without actually using any type of revert command because again libvert does not does not support it so let's go ahead and run a vert xml and then we're going to do vm name peppermint tac test all right and what we're going to do is we're going to do tac tac remove tac device and then we're going to do tac tac disk and then we're going to do target. And then this will again be that block device that we checked on earlier. We know it's going to be VDA, so let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. And it uh, went ahead and removed that. Um, it removed that 
device successfully. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and add the um, add the updated one. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do vert XML. And then we're gonna do pepper test. And then we're going to do add tac tac add tac device. Then we're gonna do tac tac disk. All right, and this is where we're gonna go ahead and put that absolute path. And then we're gonna go ahead and next to that, we're gonna do a comma. We're gonna do format. And it would either be QCOW2 or RAW, and ours is in this particular case, a QCOW2. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the bus information, which is gonna be, which is basically the driver for it to operate. It's gonna be vert IO. Whoops. And whoops, and I put dick instead of disk. Let's go ahead and fix that. Oh, um, oh, whoops, we got this one right here. We need to go ahead and add a tac tac. I'm there, we go, and there we go. So let's go ahead and do a verse dump xml pepper mint tech test and then we're going to do we're going to do a grep and then we're going to do exclamation point exclamation marks and we're going to do source file and then we're going to go ahead and do head tech one all right there we go and we can see that the the reversion has successfully resulted in us using that image. Perfect. Now, what we're going to have to now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just put the previous image back. The one for test three, because now what we're going to now what we're going to go over is we're going to go over we're going to go over actually deleting external snapshot, which is a little which is quite a bit trickier than doing it with the internal one. So what to go, be able to go ahead and do that and kind of show you the full way to do this is I'm going to have to revert back to it. So let's go ahead and do avert XML tac tac remove. I think it was remove, right? Uh, yep, remove remove tac device. All right, and we're going to do tac tac disk this time and not dick target. And then we're going to go ahead and do VDA. And it would be helpful if I went ahead and put in the domain. So let's go ahead and go back here. test and we got to go ahead and put an equal sign here there we go defined successfully now let's go ahead and do the vert xml and then pepper mint tac test tac tac add device and then we're going to do tac tac disk and then we're going to go ahead and put in the, after the, I'm going to go ahead and put in the location. Now let's go ahead and go over here and let's do format equals qcow2 and then we're going to do bus equals vert io. Perfect. And it's been defined successfully. And again, we're going to do a vert dump XML and then pepper mint test. I'm going to do a grep. I'm going to do exclamation marks. Not exclamation marks, I'm sorry, quotation marks. I think I might have been calling them uh, exclamation marks earlier. We're going to do source file. All right, and we're going to go over here and we're going to do a head tag one. And perfect. We are back at 
the third snapshot. All right, so now again, you want to make sure you you um, you want to make sure that um, you are. We've already made sure that we're on the most current the most current snapshot. Now, another way that you could do this, and I completely forgot this earlier, was we can do verse dom blk list and then pepper mint test. And we can see that it right there as well. So uh, you can do it either way. That's probably the quicker manner. So I would definitely stick to that way. All right, now the next thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is, is check we can check if you want at this point you don't have to but you can check the the backing chain qemu image qemu image info tac tac backing and then snapshot location and we're going to do grep Backing. Oops. All right, and there we go. We can see our two other images there, two and the original backing image. So perfect. Now, the next command is a little bit different than one that you've probably seen so far, and. Let's go ahead and run it here. What this what this command is going to do, and what it is, is it's verse block commit. Now, what what block commit is going to do is it's basically going to take all of those snapshots and merge it into the backing image. So it's gonna it's gonna take everything and bring it back together and basically put everything on snap. Make the backing image as current as snapshot three. Now you don't have to do this. Now, say if you want to go back to the original backing image and then delete your delete your delete your snapshots that is definitely something that you can do but, but what you'll have to do is you'll actually have to use that process that we use in the reversion section to go ahead and roll back to that particular to the to the backing image and then you'll go ahead and then delete the delete the snapshots to make sure that you get rid of them out of the system so let's go ahead and you see the verse block commit command All right, we're going to do that, and we're going to do pepper mint test. All right, and then the next command is going to be the the block device location, which is the VDA. All right, and then we're going to type in tac tac verbose. We're going to tack in. We're going to put in tac tac pivot, and then we're going to do tac tac active. Whoops, and And to go ahead and make sure that this is done, to make sure this is working properly, and to execute this properly, is we're going to have to do a verse start peppermint test. All right, now let's go ahead and run the command again. There we go. So yeah, when you're running the when you're running the verse block commit command, is you do need to make sure that the domain is started. All right, so now what you can do is do another verse dom block list. All right, perfect. And we can see that now it's got the original backing image there. So now what we're good to do is we're good to go ahead and actually delete the snapshots. So what we're going to do for that is verse snapshot delete. And then we're going to do the domain name, which is peppermint test. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the oldest snapshot name, which in our particular case is going to be this one right here. All right, now the reason that we're going to put in the, the oldest one is because we want to go ahead and delete that one as well as any children that spawned from that particular snapshot. So we'll do, we'll go in here and we'll do that and then we'll do a tac tac children 
And then we'll also go ahead and take out all the metadata that's going to be associated with those images. All right, perfect. All right, now if we go do a verse, uh, we do a snapshot, tag list, and then we do external, whoops. we can see that there is nothing there. Now, we have to do one additional step because if we just do an ls command here, we can still see that the we can still see that the disk image is here, so what we got to do is we're going to have to go ahead and delete that. So the easiest way to do that is just do an rm right there and then we can do a we can also do the same thing with let's see here what was it? It was ls uh, external and done. All right, cool. So you'll want to make sure that you delete those external disk images after you've deleted the the actual snapshots themselves. If not, they will just sit there continuing to eat up your space on your hard drive. All right. And then thank you very much for that uh, marathon journey through external snapshots there quite confusing and not something that I particularly like to deal with and as you can tell I, I still make mistakes with this and this is not this is nothing that I am claiming to be an expert in whatsoever and I just want you to know is like look uh, as you're learning stuff you're gonna make mistakes and that's the only way that you're ever gonna get better is the willingness to make those mistakes so I really want to thank you for watching my video Give it a thumbs up if you like to give it a thumbs down if you did not. Let me know what I can do better. Let me know what I'm doing good. Let me know what you want to see in the future. Um, I really, again, uh, thank you for your time and hope you have the greatest of days.